Ephesians chapter 2, going along with this uh, before picture, uh, we read in verse 1, we're going to look at verse 2, but we're going to go back to verse 1, and he, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Uh, this word walked here in verse 2, is a better translated uh, meandered. And whenever you see a person meandering, you get the impression that he's not really going anywhere, uh, he, that he doesn't really have any purpose. He's just sort of wandering, me meandering. And in times past, you and I, before Christ, were just meandering through life. That is, uh, you really didn't have any real eternal purpose. You were really not going anywhere. You were just existing. But there was no real purpose in your life. And the word course, because uh, it goes in which you once walked according to the course of this world. The word course uh, has its root meaning in Greek uh, of a weather vane. That is, uh, whatever way the wind is flowing, the, that's the way you turned. That's the way, that's the way you went. Uh, so the flow of the world, you just flowed with it. Whatever was the current fashion, the current thing, uh, whatever was the current fad, uh, here I am following with it. And you, we didn't have real purpose. You see, we were dead in trespasses and sins, and, and we our minds were full of the flesh, like we talked about last video, in the last video. And, uh, and that's why Jesus said you have to be born again, because we were dead in trespasses and sins. And then whenever you come to know the Lord, truly you do fit, find out the purpose of your life. Uh, Jesus said this in Matthew 16, verse 25. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And of course, he's talking about eternal. You know, you give your life to, to him, uh, you'll find life. You, you'll have eternal life. Uh, but I, I believe he's also talking about the here and now, you you surrender your will, your plans, your your life to Him, then you'll begin to find out the purpose of your own life. Like I, I never thought that I'd be teaching the Word in any capacity, uh, but but that's what the Lord has me doing. And you give your life to Him, you'll see the purpose of why He has you here. And uh. In Revelations chapter 4, it kind of gives the general reason why we're all here. Uh, it says, uh, I'll just go to verse 11 of Rome, uh, Revelation chapter 4. Thou art, art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We're created for, for God's pleasure. To do his will. To do his work. And whether you like that or not. That's the purpose of our existence here. And if you are not walking with the Lord. Uh, you can't be doing that. You, you can't be doing his good pleasure. And you're going to miss the purpose of your whole existence. And you're going to live a life of frustration. You're going to live a life of unfulfillment. But whenever you give your life to the Lord. He begins to work out his perfect will. Of in your life so it's not that you don't have free will you do have free will but he just knows the best for you and if you give your life to him his plan is way far greater than ours for our life so we were just we were dead in our sins again and trespasses and sins and we were we once walked according to the course of this air of, of this world according to the prince of the power of the air and this is a unique title for Satan. Uh, it speaks of his authority, which is he's a prince, and his realm, the air, which is the environment, the world, pretty much. And um, verse three, among whom you also want you you all once conducted ourselves. We all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. And of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. 
it's our nature to rebel against God. Apart from Jesus Christ, we deserve his wrath. And in these verses, we, we see the three big enemies of us. Um, first of all, the world. It says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. You know, the world is trying to uh, have us um, compromise to conform to them. So the world is one of them. The, uh, the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan. Satan's going to try to always uh, cause us to doubt God's word, to challenge God's word, to challenge, challenge God's love for us, his will for our lives, his goodness. That's the second enemy. And then in verse 3, among whom you also could, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature children of, the, of wrath, just as the others. The third enemy, the flesh. So you see all three of them in this the, this short section: the world, the devil, and our flesh. And those are the three big enemies for for the for all Christians, for all walk, uh, believers of Christ. And the desires of the flesh and of the mind. You see, um, we we think about the sins of the flesh that are so obvious, right? Uh, whether it's fornication, uh, you know, like prostitution, uh, drugs, things that are uh, visible. But the mind isn't always that visible. You know, we we can feed the desires of the mind, which that are sinful and uh, we can hide that, you know, whether it's pornography, whether it's bitterness, whether it's anger, eventually those things will come out. I mean, you can just see uh, what's in someone's mind, what's in their heart. Uh, it's going to come out of their mouth, Jesus said, but those are harder to detect and they're easier to hide at times.